Um, so what are some do's and don'ts when it comes to hold goals? Can I have 10 hold goals or <laughs> um <laughs> or maybe just like one hold goal that owns like you know 10 corporations in it? What are some best practices basically for you know owning a hold goal? What are some things maybe you shouldn't put in there at all? Um, and are there some things you're not allowed to put into a hold goal? Okay, that's a great question. Um, so I find just out of my own client base that typically when people have a corporation, they don't like to deal with, let's say, lawyers again. So mm -hmm. if they have another business idea, like just the other day, I had a client come to me and, and say uh, they have a company that holds some land and we were actually mm -hmm. going to use this as their holding company in a new company that we're creating. Um, mm -hmm. And this person at the same time has a wife that wanted to start a business venture and proposed to me that she start the venture in this holding company, right? Because it's like, you don't want to deal with a lawyer to get a new corporation. You don't want to mix maybe your operating company and have two streams of operations. So mm -hmm. they have a holding company set up already. Why can't we just use this to do some, let's say, management consulting work? And I would say okay. that's probably the biggest no-no. That's a big red flag for me because mm -hmm. the whole point of us setting up the Holdco in the first place is so that we mm -hmm. eliminate all operations. Anytime mm -hmm. you have an active business, so like a management consulting, even though it mm -hmm. seems harmless, that's still yeah. somewhat of an active business being operated in your holding company. So that mm -hmm. I would say is is one area that you don't want to venture on. If you if you do have an active business idea, you don't mm -hmm. want to run that in your holding company. You want to keep your holding company strictly to holding, you know, your assets that you've accumulated over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Um can you turn a normal corporation into a hold co? Let's say I have an existing corporation and then I'm like, okay, now I'm thinking about doing a hold go. Can we just use my corporation to be the hold go or or would it be better to incorporate a whole new corporation and make that the hold go and then keep, you know, the first corporation as the opco? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that lawyers do not like that. Uh, okay. The reason being, <laughs> the reason being is number one, you're cutting into their fees, but number two, and more importantly, that was kind of a, a lighthearted the response in the number mm -hmm. one. But number two is, if you have a company that exists, there are chances that there is exposure to that company, whether it is tax exposure oh. or let's say a you know a, a lawsuit that maybe someone forgot about that is still in the courts or maybe a lawsuit that is in the making on some activity that happened a few years ago that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. So if we use yeah. this company all of a sudden that has been operating and turn it into a holding company, there's that risk that something pops up out of the woods and all of a sudden, you know, puts your hard earned dollars at risk. Um, so, so that is one reason why lawyers don't like it. Now, mm -hmm. if you have something that has been dormant for many years, let's say you have a company that has been dormant for many years and mm -hmm. you are a hundred percent certain that there's no risk of any, you know, tax that pops up or lawsuits or that sort of thing, then mm -hmm. just me and my common sense approach, I would say that could be used as a holding company. And it, it mm -hmm. does make the process a lot easier to set up.